Ah, yes. Betty to be my friend and bitch at me when I'm doing things wrong. Here we are at Sedona Airport. People testing the limits trying to get this 747 off the ground here in a runway that's a bit too short for it. I do love this airport and I recommend coming here. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's a, a beautiful area with kind of little unique features on the runway here. Uh, we will be testing the limits of this Cessna Longitude today. We're going to get into something called the Coffin Corner, the Q Corner. Uh, we're going to see just how high we can get this thing. According to Cessna's website, we should be able to get over uh, 43,000 feet. But let's see how much more we can push that here in Microsoft Fight Simulator. One of the reasons I like pushing limits is because you end up learning. And today I learned something pretty important about getting up high enough to where you can actually stall and overspeed at the same time. I did a little bit of research on this and I'll post it in the link below. Essentially, you are looking at a state where the aircraft cannot maintain stable flight. Uh, it's an instable condition that's considered to be very, very dangerous. I've heard it referred to as the coffin corner or the Q corner. Incidentally, I tried contacting Cessna. I spoke to a couple of folks there and this wasn't something they had any data or information on. Um, and if they did, it would probably be something calculated. Uh, certainly they wouldn't go test this. But the fun of Flight Simulator is we can go test these things and, and see what we uh, can learn and understand. As we cross over 50,000 feet, one of the things I read going back after I did this test flight was that essentially what you have is you have a situation where the wings cannot create enough lift because the air is so thin at the height you're at. And in order for them to get enough lift, the aircraft would have to increase its speed. And it can't do that because your airframe can't handle it. So essentially, the aircraft is unstable because it cannot get enough lift to maintain stable flight. The aircraft actually becomes so unstable that when I was reading about it, they said that it'd be impossible to fly without autopilot. Um, I was climbing at this point with autopilot. Uh, it helps me to enjoy the view. And to be honest, I wanted to learn a bit more about this Garmin uh, 5000, which is on the jet. As we transition to just about 60,000 feet, you're gonna see and hear that we are actually stalling. At this point, um, I'm, I'm guessing that we're at the maximum altitude we're going to achieve, but I wanted to keep pushing it to see and feel what uh, a stall would be like. At this point, I turn off the autopilot. I wanted to see how unstable the aircraft felt. And as you'll see, it actually maintains a pretty straight and level flight, although it is still overspeeding and stalling. So now that I knew that the aircraft was stable by itself, uh, I wanted to see how it would respond if I try to turn it left and right at altitude and essentially testing how good the flight model is, maybe representing the instability we should see. And although it doesn't really respond very well and want to turn, I am able to make a controlled left and right turn to a point where I felt like I had positive control of the aircraft. After testing the turning stability, I wanted to see if I could find the exact point at which it was going to vacillate between overspeed and stall. And as you can see, it's porpoising up and down with overspeed and stall. Autopilot is on, and I think we've achieved the balance point. And now that we've tested those things, what's left to do when you have all this altitude? That's right, turn it down and see how fast we can go. And after we let it sit here for a bit and let Bitching Betty continue at us, we were able to achieve 586 knots and a TAS of 687. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And before we hit the ground, I hope you will like and subscribe.